Welcome back everyone. As you probably guessed from the thumbnail and the intro, today we are going over this line of ammunition from the folks over at AAC. This is their Sabre lineup, specifically their black tip in 5.56. As of right now, what I'm filming anyway, this may change in the future, uh, we have all three variants that they are offering. So we have the 55 grain here, the 62 grain, and the 75 grain. And these are all, again, 5.56 chambering, so not 223, which is nice for velocity and power. Um, and basically they have a black ballistic tip bullet that is similar, not the same, similar in function to like a TMK style bullet for folks that are uh, familiar with that. So it should have good ballistic properties, uh, but it is not a bonded bullet. Speaking of that, it comes in at a very affordable price. So as of when I'm recording this video, anywhere from 50 to 55 cents around for a defensive style ammunition. Uh, it's pretty darn good. But before we actually head out to the range and talk about the actual ballistics gel performance and show you guys that as well, I do want to mention that this is a Mug Club episode. Uh, so over on Mug Club, after this video, we're going to go over the top five defense rounds for AR-15s. Uh, obviously, over there on Mug Club, we can speak freely, which is nice, and we're not bound by the censorship that we have here on YouTube. And for those that don't know, Mug Club is a place where creators can create content without censorship. As I just indicated, there's lots of folks over there right now. It just expanded as of a couple days ago. So Steven Crowder, the Hodge twins, uh, Alex J. I don't think I can say his name on YouTube. Uh, censorship, right? Um, uh, Nick DePaula, Brian Callen, lots of folks are coming on board as well. So um, again, if you guys are interested in that, there should be a link here on your screen as well as a discount code to get you guys a free month of membership. But with that said, uh, speaking of heading out to the range, I should note that it was so hot out there the day I filmed this. Uh, it was easily in the triple digits on red Carolina clay. I tried to get the chronograph results for you guys for all of these. Something's off with that chronograph, man. But it, it, the chronograph is malfunctioning just due to the heat. There's not a whole lot I could do about it, but the gel worked just fine. So let's head out there and see how these perform out of a 16 inch barrel. Now I should note that we're shooting at about 10 yards. So you're effectively getting muzzle velocity, uh, penetration and ballistics from this. First up, it's gonna be at 75 grain. Hopefully this angle is letting you guys see what happened here in the gel. Obviously it's not new gel, so it's recycled, but that's pretty much textbook performance. So I went in, right about an inch, just started to open up and do nasty damage all the way down to the six inch mark. And then it is resting right at the 14 and a half inch mark in terms of total penetration. 62 grain up next. I'm guessing the slow motion has shown it, but also very good performance there on that one. Uh, looking at it from the top, I can tell what's going on. I'm not sure if you guys can see the two separate tracks. That one was a little bit bright and a little bit higher, um, but virtually identical. The big difference is the permanent wound cavity here is about five and a half inches on this one. So a little bit longer permanent wound cavity with the 75 gram and the penetration was less. So it's 12 and a half inches of penetration. Last up, the 55 grain. That one behaved pretty much exactly how I expected after the first two. So came in, obviously we had a massive wound track. That's kind of a given with these bullets. At this point, they, they do what they do. And the permanent cavity on that one, at about five and a half inches on that one as well. Big difference is it did not penetrate as much. I'm not sure if you guys can see it on camera, but out here in the actual natural light, I can see exactly where the bullet is. And I will pull it out here in a second, but it is right at 10 and a half inches of penetration. 
Just a couple of things I want to bring up before we get into the actual discussion of the performance there. Number one, again, is that we're shooting at about 10 yards with a 16 inch barrel. So one thing you can just reasonably determine from the results that we saw there is that, you know, anywhere from 12 and a half to 14 and a half inches of penetration out of that 16 inch barrel. But if you step that out to 100 yards or 200 yards, what you would get is you would get less shedding of the projectile itself, therefore more penetration as it went through. So if you were to do the same test with like a 10 and a half inch barrel, let's say at the same distance, uh, you definitely would have had more penetration there than what we saw out of the 16 inch. And if it was a 20 inch barrel, less, so on and so forth. So I realize that may seem super basic for a lot of folks watching this, but there's a lot of new folks as well. So you need to understand that. So again, some people look at this test and are probably gonna say that the penetration for them was a little bit too light, particularly with like our 55 grain here, not quite enough penetration, which should mention that again, with the new folks out there, the FBI spec for penetration is between 12 to 18 inches of penetration. That's kind of ideal. In that case, every one of these rounds met that standard. So there is that, but again, if you were using a, say a 14 and a half inch barrel and the target was at 50 yards, you would have seen more penetration. So just throwing that out there for everyone. Um, but looking at the actual projectiles there, we did pull them out of the gel. We have our 55 grain projectile here, 62 grain projectile here, and 75 grain projectile here. I did measure the weights on these and we will roll that here in here on your screen. One thing you're gonna note, just looking at the different weights of them is that they do shed a good bit of weight. Like I mentioned in the intro, these are not bonded projectiles meaning that the fragmentation that you get in that first, you know, one to six inches is part of the design of the round. Some folks don't like that. Some folks do like that. I'll let you guys debate it down below in the comment section as always. If you can see the retained weight here, it definitely went up as the weight of the bullet went up, which makes sense. Um, of course, our 75 grainer looks a little bit meatier than the others. The others definitely lost more jacket, but all of them still kept that lead core at the base that pushed on through to get you guys the penetration that you want. Basically, I suppose my take on it is that ballistically, they perform very well, in my opinion, particularly for the price point of these rounds. Additionally, uh, in terms of accuracy, we have tested these rounds, all of them uh, for accuracy out of multiple rifles, the most inaccurate I've gotten to date out of at least six or seven rifles. You guys will see them here on the channel. One of them's already up uh, for the testing as we do more AR-15 and barrel tests. You guys will see them uh, being rolled in, but the most worst, I guess the worst, the most widespread has been 2.5 inches. Um, and that one there was in a SAG tactical with the 55 grain. We've had multiple groups with these two, the 62 and the 75 grain that have been under an inch. So accuracy wise, you kind of can't complain about that, at least not in my opinion. And before discussing reliability, I should mention just full disclosure, these were sent out to me by the folks at AAC Ammo. They didn't pay for me to do this video or anything like that, but they were sent out and I got a lot of rounds sent out. I have over 500 rounds of each load uh, so far shot through various rifles and we have had zero issues in terms of reliability at all. One rifle was under gassed at the gas block, but you can't put that on the ammo because it's an adjustable gas block. So with factory rifle settings, literally zero malfunctions to date. So you cannot be mad about that in terms of reliability. And I suppose at this point, that's pretty much all I have for you. If you guys are watching this, not on YouTube and any of the other platforms, there will be links down below for you guys to pick this load up. Again, I think for the price point, we have very good performance here. And I think the different weights gives you a very good option as a consumer as to what you're comfortable with for the threats that you perceive or the shooting environments that you may perceive. You know, if you live in an apartment in downtown Baltimore, this with a 20 inch barrel, the 55 grainers might be something you're interested in because you are very worried about quote unquote over penetration. Whereas if you live in a rural area and you're rocking that, you know, 11 and a half SPR, the 75 grains are probably going to perform very well in that application. So uh, just kind of depends what you want. But I think again, across the board, we had pretty good performance here for sure. There's a lot of people that have chronoed these online and the chronograph results are actually very close to what the advertised velocity is. So good on them for that as well. And with that, we're going to close the video out. Thank you all for watching. I truly appreciate it. If you like this type of content and you're not subscribed, I definitely recommend hitting subscribe. Additionally, follow me across all my various social media that you see here on the screen. 
I post deals when these things are in stock, on sale, etc. across there all the time. Additionally, if there's any sort of update, like a bad lot of this comes out or a great lot of this, whatever the case may be, comes out, uh, we will post those on my social media as well. We can't always do a full production video uh, for YouTube, but you can get quick stuff up there as well that helps everyone stay informed. Uh, and if you guys have subscribed and you've hit the notification bell here on YouTube and you're not seeing two to four videos a week here on the channel, make sure you sign up for my email at the website here on the screen. This email goes out once a month and it has all the videos since the previous month's email. So that way there's no big tech giants centering your eyes from my content. Additionally, we have our daily deals email that goes out every day as the name indicates. And basically if anything, ammo, guns, gear, etc., are in that email, it's the cheapest I know of anywhere on the internet on that particular day because I've already done the price comparisons for you. So hopefully that will save you guys some time and hopefully save you some money as well. And that's all I got for you. Thank you all for watching. Now we're gonna head over to Mug Club. Piss off YouTube.